If you have some basic knowledge of Python, you can easily create new custom brushes for Ornatrix to work with the Edit Guides operator. Of course, in Ornatrix we have all kinds of different brushes that do various operations, from combing to creating and deleting hairs to changing their length. But if you have some specific task that you need to be done that's not covered by one of our brushes, you can program a custom brush to do just that. To do this, find this user brush icon on the Ornatrix shelf and click it to activate the brush. Double click the Tools window button to find the Tools uh, window option. And in here we have our standard brush settings, which will be used with our brush. If you go all the way down to the user brushes drop down, you see that we have a bunch of options here. And if you open this drop down, you can see that we have a couple of pre made brushes that are distributed with Ornatrix. You can use these brushes as a reference for your own scripts. The Reload Brushes button will reload the brushes from the hard disk. So whenever you make some changes to your scripts, you can use this button to get the updated behavior and the list of the brushes. The Browse button will open up an Explorer window where you can see the brushes in the directory that they are installed and scanned from. So here we have the two pre-made brushes that come with Ornatrix and we are going to create our own brush for this tutorial. I'm going to go to New and create a new text document and I'm going to name it my brush dot py because we're going to use Python. On Linux and Macintosh, you can use the similar functionality and just create the scripts uh, using the OS tool that you have available to you. So I'm going to double click my, um, my brush that I have created and uh, the editor of choice that I have on this computer is Notepad++, which is free and can be easily downloaded online. So if I just uh, re reload the brushes right now, my brush is not going to be visible. And if I go to my Maya output window, we can see why it says uh, that it's not a valid user defined brush. It's not a valid user defined brush because the file is empty and it doesn't actually have any content. So for this tutorial, we're just going to create the bare minimum. Of course, uh, there are a lot more complicated things that you can do, but let's just get something uh, working. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the Ethereum Ornatrix namespace and I'm going to call it just OX for short. Then I'm going to add this uh, function called evaluate. So the evaluate function is the main and the only function that we need inside our brush. This function gets called during the brush drag operation with the appropriate parameters that are needed for modifying the hair as well as probing the various properties associated with your brush. It has the guide editor, the brush parameters, the direction of the brush, it has uh, the length of the stroke, and it has the indices of the strands that are currently being affected by the brush operation. So just to have some kind of functionality, let me first grab the hair structure from our guides editor. So the guides editor has this function called get editable guide and uh, it returns a hair structure. Guides and hair in Orange Tricks are the same thing. They're just called different depending on the usage of uh, the strands inside the viewport. So in our case, we have uh, hair, but it could easily be guides as well. So uh, after this, I'm going to save my file. I'm going to go back to the tool settings. I'm going to press the reload brushes button again. And now my brush appears inside the dropdown. When I select my brush and I start dragging inside the viewport, nothing happens. But also if I go to my script editor and look at the output, we can see that a brushing operation was actually recorded and there were no errors, which means that the evaluate function in our script was called correctly. It just didn't do anything. So let's uh, make it do something first. Uh, I'm going to iterate over all the indices inside this strand indices uh, property that's passed into the evaluate function of the brush. And the strand index can be used in conjunction with this hair structure to get and set points for a specific strand. You don't necessarily have to edit points. You can also edit channel values or groups or anything like that. But you probably the most common situation is to actually edit the guides or hair shape, which is done by changing the points. So I'm going to create a new variable called strand points. And this strand points is retrieved by calling get strand points on the hair and specifying the strand index as the first parameter. And as the second parameter, we specify the coordinate space in which we want to receive the strand points. 
we specify object here, but you can also set this to strand, in which case it's going to return points in individual strand space, which need to be transformed to and from object space using the strand transform. This is not important for this tutorial, but uh, it's useful to know. So after getting my strand points, I'm just going to directly set them back into my hair. Uh, so presumably here between these two lines, I need to modify my strand points in some way and then I'm going to set them back into the hair. So again, just like the get method, we have a set method and the set method accepts the strand index, it accepts the modified strand points and then we also pass the object space as the third parameter to notify Ornatrix that the strand points are located inside object coordinates. So once I have the strand points, I can iterate over all these points so I can edit each point individually. And I do this by creating another for loop and this for loop is just going to iterate the index going from zero to the length of my strand point. So, so for each strand point, we have a point index. Inside of my loop, I'm going to get the strand points and I'm going to pass the point index as the array iterator of my strand points and then I'm just going to do something to it. So let's just add one to it uh, by adding, incrementing the strand point, which is a three dimensional vector by one. We're essentially saying that we want to increment the X, Y and Z coordinates of this point each by one unit. I'm going to save my file. I'm going to reload my brush. And then if I press and drag right now, you can see that when I uh, drag over a set of strands, they just sort of start flying away. And this is pretty much what we expect when each of the coordinates of each of the points on these strands is incremented by one unit. So they start floating forwards on the X, Y and Z axis at the same time. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually not modify the whole point, but just the area that's located uh, inside the brush region. When brushing, Ornatrix pre-calculates the affected areas on each strand by assigning weights to individual points within the strand. To get these weights, I'm going to create another variable called vertex weights and it's going to get the weights from the guides editor. Simply calling the get vertex weights with the strand index will do this for me. Then inside my strand points, point index, instead of incrementing by one, I'm going to increment my points by the vertex weight. So in places where the brush is not affecting a strand point, this is going to add zero, which means it's going to do nothing. But in places where my brush affects my hair is more, it's going to increment by larger values. Again, this depends on the brush attenuation strength as well as the brush strength that goes from the outside edge of the brush towards the center. So for example, towards the center right now, we have a bigger influence than towards the sides. If I save my file, I reload again and I drag inside the viewport, you can see that just the areas of the uh, hairs that are affected by the brush now get moved. The reason that we get this snapping of the hairs back is because it's trying to also preserve the strand length. We can turn off this preserved strand length and optimize strand geometry option to make sure that uh, after we let go, nothing else happens to the strands. So the length is not preserved. The strands actually change their length when we modify them. So right now we're simply moving the strands forwards in all axes by one. And as a last thing for this tutorial, let's actually factor in the direction of the brush movement into the way that we modify the strands. So if I go back to my script here, you can see that we have this uh, variable called brush direction in object space. And uh, basically this is a three dimensional vector in object space. Notice that this is the same space in which we are setting and getting the strands. Uh, so it's compatible and we can take this direction vector and multiply it by the individual vertex weights to create the offset for the strand points. So uh, I'm just going to multiply this here. I'm going to save my file, reload my brush. And now when I drag inside the viewport, the brush direction actually matters. So we are essentially moving the strands. This is a very simplified version of the comb brush or, or the move brush where the strand length is not preserved, but it, uh, it is a very simple yet very useful example of how to factor in the direction of the brush movements. There are also various other parameters that are worth mentioning, but I'm not going to go into detail in this tutorial. For example, I can add this brush strength variable here where it takes the strength from the brush parameters and it also multiplies it by the brush stroke length. The stroke length will change. So it's going to be bigger if you move the mouse faster 
and it's going to be smaller if you very slowly drag the hair. This is very useful at times when you want the faster movement to affect strands in a more severe way than very minor movements of the brush. Again, you can open this uh, demo script for the clump and the move brush uh, to get a better idea and more reference for what's available when it comes to creating custom brush scripts. Please also visit our website and the documentation to get a more detailed reference on all the parameters that are available for you and how you can create even more powerful brushes.